Are Christians required to keep the Sabbath? We're going to discuss this question and a few others in this weekly Q&A on our Sharing Jesus with the Colts uh, content. And so if you're new to the channel, we are people of the free gift, and we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. So if that intrigues you, then click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our content related to cults and how to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. And so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, this last few weeks, I've been incredibly busy, but a lot of content and questions and things have been pouring in. And so I have gotten to the point where I've realized that almost all of the content on this channel needs to be focused on your questions as well as the, the biggest feedback that I've gotten. And so that, as I can say, vidIQ language, I can double down on that content and help grow the channel. So help me on that quest and share this with others as well. <clears throat> so I had a couple of different things in relation to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. One was just continuing on in my ongoing conversation in answer to an individual who came to my church and had attended a, a conference at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and he asked me to look over the materials that they gave him there. And so I wanted to touch on uh, the article called The Sabbath. Um, so this was official Seventh-day Adventist source material. And so I just wanted to talk about some things that uh, troubled me as I read this and I feel like are inaccurate and also will help you as you uh, seek to understand the Bible in a deeper way. So, and then we're going to get into a, comment, a commenter who has some uh, things that I want to address as well. So the fourth commandment says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. The first thing that I want to say and address here is that, yes, we are talking about a ten, one of the Ten Commandments, but you have to keep in mind, and this is a big error on the, on the part of the Seventh-day Adventists, is most of the scriptures that they are pointing to in reference to the Sabbath and other topics as well, and they're not the only group who does this, is for, are from the Old Testament. And I'm not saying the Old Testament, it should just be thrown out and we don't have anything to do with it. But I will say this, that you should not conflate the Old Testament and New Testament and assume that they are the exact same thing or that you, should, you can take something from either one of them and you can just apply it directly to Christianity. And this is a great example. The Ten Commandments is a part of the Old Testament covenant that was made between Yahweh and Israel. Israel was his covenant people, and he asked them to circumcise themselves as a sign of that covenant, and then the other sign of that covenant was the keeping of the Sabbath. And yes, the Sabbath does point back to creation. And God says, for in six days I made the heavens and the earth, and then on the seventh day I rested, so shall you work six days and then rest on the Sabbath. But I want to point out that that was a part of the old covenant. When Jesus sat down with his disciples at the last meal, he says, a new covenant in my blood, which shall be shed for you in the breaking of my body, and I'm making with you. John speaks of a new commandment to love. And so we have this new covenant, new command in the New Testament. And so if the general rule is this, if you are reading something in the Old Testament as a command, and it was between God and Israel, if that thing is repeated in the New Testament as something that Christians should practice, not something that you know determines whether you have a relationship with God, not something that is you know legalistic in meaning, but it's repeated as a standard and principle for Christians in the New, New Covenant, then it is wise to proceed with that. And that happens with nine out of the ten commandments that are in the Old Testament. Okay, we are told to not commit adultery. We're told to not have any other gods before him. We're told to not say the Lord's name in vain. We're told to obey our parents. We're told all of these other things, not coveting, all these things. But when it comes to the Sabbath, 
There are some very specific things that are said, and I'm going to get to that in a moment, okay? But the first distinction is Old Covenant versus New Covenant. Are you a part of Israel? Or are you a part of the church? And that applies to a lot of the things that they said, honestly, where they said this divine law is indisputable in its requirements. And absolutely, it was absolutely crystal clear what God expected of the Israelites, but it is not meant to apply to us. The second thing that I want to point out is that they reference a lot of scriptures that simply mention the Sabbath and assume that it, it is a verification that we should continue keeping the Sabbath. An example, Isaiah 66, 23, speaking of the new heavens and the new earth, it says that certain things are going to happen from one Sabbath to another. Now, it mentions the Sabbath, but you need to keep in mind that the origin of the Sabbath, the term Sabbath, was the creation of count. It was day seven. It's another way of saying you just look at a calendar, which is something that the other commenter advised me to do. Just look at a ca calendar. And even the Spanish word for Sabbath or Saturday is sabado, okay? Sabbath, seventh day, seventh day of the week. So the mention of a Sabbath does not mean it does, it is not synonymous with keeping the Sabbath or the commandment to keep the Sabbath. It's just mentioning it. And so another, we keep the Sabbath by coming together for worship, building each other up through fellowship, ministering to the needs of others according to the example Jesus gave us, and through missionary, get this, through missionary work, fulfilling Christ's great commission, Matthew 28, 18, 28, 18 through 20. Did you catch that they are talking about the Sabbath, the day of rest, and they said, this is what we do on the Sabbath, the day of rest. We work. We work. Does anybody else see the, the, the double standard and the, the completely confusing message that you're sending by saying that the Sabbath is a day for us to do God's work? When that was the very day in which God rested and he commands us to rest. And the other thing I want to make clear is I'm not saying that there's absolutely no benefit in resting and setting one day apart to do that. Jesus made it clear that the Sabbath was not made for man or man was not made for the Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man. Okay. And that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. So also in God's final warning message to the world for all humanity, symbolized by the three angels of Revelation 14, 6, and 12, men and women are again called to recognize God as creator and to keep his commandments. Therefore, in the time of the end, the Sabbath will stand out with special significance transformed into a special test of loyalty to God in an era of global apostasy. Two things that I need to mention there on this as we wrap that part of this up is that one, from Revelation 4 on, it is in completely entirely Jewish. Okay? Um, I believe personally the church is gone. It's out of there by the time you get out of there and it's symbolized in a lot of different ways. Okay, but God's covenant with his people Israel is not over yet. And Paul alludes to that in Romans 9, 10, and 11. And so you have this imagery that is given to a primarily Jewish, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. It is at the time of tribulation. It's the 70th week of Daniel and his people. Okay, so... That is one thing that I would say about that. The, the reason why the Sabbath, or even if it's being mentioned, that would be a reason why. The other thing is that it's just referencing keeping his commandments. But what are his commandments in the reference of Revelation? Revelation is a new covenant, New Testament text. And so you can't apply the old covenant commandments to Revelation and the message that they're saying. And so that's the thing that I see them doing over and over again when it comes to the Sabbath. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, find the other commenter 
And so here we go. Okay. So the so kind of sarcastic right from the, the people with the free gift. Hey, honey, how have you ever picked up a calendar? If not, why not have it a try now? At the top, you can probably see the days of the week. In order, they go Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so now that we have checked that out, let's go and have a little look in the Bible, shall we? Now, if you are too busy commenting lies on people's comments, why not have a little look at these verses? Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Exodus 28 through 11, Isaiah 58, 13 through 14, 56, 1 through 8. What I have to say right there is those are all Old Testament, Old Covenant text. Creation just simply observes that God works at six days and rested on the seventh day. As there's no command to observe the Sabbath there. Okay? And then from Exodus through Isaiah, all of those. And then Nehemiah 13, 19 is mentioned as well. Those are Old Covenant, Old Testament texts. We've already talked about that. Acts 17, 2, Acts 18, 4 and 11, Luke 4, 16, Mark 2, 27 through 28, Matthew 12, 10 through 12. Now, those are New Testament texts. So what about that? Every single one of them, when you look it up, is simply describing the fact that Jewish people still worshipped on the Sabbath day. They met in synagogues, and so Jesus and Paul and whoever is talking about, they went into the synagogue, and they worshipped, and they got up and they preached the gospel to them. And so that's all it's describing. Hebrews chapter 4, 1 through 11, I found interesting that they mentioned. Because yes, it does talk about the Sabbath, but it says that Jesus is our rest, that the, the Sabbath itself was all a type and a picture and a shadow pointing to Jesus as our rest. And in fact, Hebrews 4.10 says this. It says that he who has entered into his rest has ceased from his labors. It's an absolute echoing of what Jesus says when he said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Literally, same thing, you will cease, cause you to cease from your labors. Okay? Romans 14, 5, Paul says that the Sabbath, he says one person considers one day separate and unique and holy, and another considers every day alike. Let each be convinced in his own mind and do accordingly. Okay, so Paul puts this in the area of the gray, meaning things that the scripture is not clear, not crystal clear that you should do this, don't do that. And so if the Ten Commandments applied to that, that seems pretty crystal clear if that applies to New Testament believers, but Paul didn't believe that. And I want you to note that. And so he put it in the area of you need to um, follow what the Holy Spirit is doing and leading in your life. And you should not be imposing that on other people. That's called legalism. Colossians 2.16, it says, let no one judge you in Sabbaths, new moons and festivals or anything like that. And isn't that exactly what you are doing in your comments right here? Isn't that exactly what the Seventh-day Adventist is doing, church is doing in relation to their teaching on the Sabbath and how they are the one true church because they are alone or anybody who is practicing the Sabbath, they would qualify as legitimate Christians and believers, but everyone who is not is not. Wouldn't God be more clear than that? And wouldn't Paul be very confusing in the way that he talks about the Sabbath? And so now they are just a few, but what do they have in common? Oh, yes, the Sabbath. And what does day is the Sabbath? Well, according to the lovely little book of God's truth, that is the Bible, it's the seventh day. Now, 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 what do we have here? You claiming that the SDA church lives lies, but it seems that the Catholic and most of the Christian churches are doing just that. 
And also let's flip to Exodus 28 through 11, shall we? Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Okay, we know what Exodus 20 says. We already talked about that. God's rule, she says at the end. Also, I recommend a study of the Ten Horned Beasts in Revelation and in Daniel, also some lovely sermons from the SDA pastors. I found the Amazing Facts series with Doug Batchelor fun and interesting. Doug Batchelor, I used to watch him when I was a teenager, and um, man, I, I can't tell you how out of context a person can be I, I, except for pointing them to Doug Batchelor, honestly. I mean, he would probably teach a lot of things about Revelation that you would completely disagree with. Um, and so, I, you know, maybe that might be a fun thing just to even just um, do a video just on Doug Batchelor and uh, some of the things that he's taught out there. Um, Hopefully, they can open your eyes to the truth. Now, friend, I'm not asking you to believe it straight away, but please may you just give it a go. Now, this is just one example that I, a 15-year-old girl, can give you. There goes the sarcasm, right? Okay. You believe you are worshiping the correct way, but if you can't practice what you preach, my friend, then it is really the truth. Is it really the truth after all? God bless. Have a wonderful Sabbath. I'll be praying for you. Okay. So that's the deal with the Sabbath. And so I've already gone long enough in this one. Stay tuned for my next video, uh, my Q&A video, which is going to focus in on Joseph Smith's first vision boasting and martyrdom and so if you haven't already go ahead and click that subscribe button give us a thumbs up on the video if you like the content for today and share this video with others who are interested in cults and how to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you have insights or comments related to something that I did not cover, put them in the comments down below. I'll be choosing some for next week's batch of content that will become what's now several different Q&As. And also, I just set up a Patreon account. And so if you desire to, to support me and my ministry, then do that. I have several different tiers. And so just briefly, the first tier puts you in the front of the line for these weekly Q&A discussions. The second tier, uh, which it, that the first tier is just $1 a month, okay? $5 a month gives you first immediate access to any video that I schedule to be uploaded later or to be live later. And so you would have the link to watch that immediately, okay? $10 a month would give you access to all of my written uh, content. And that's past content, present content, future content, which means if you pledge it the $10 a month, then you can get my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts, um, on, uh, via Kindle, and uh, you can get it for free. Well, you, you're getting it for your pledge, and my way of saying thank you. And um, so I also, you know, I'm going to set a goal that says when I get to $1,000 in total pledges or money that's come in through Patreon, I'm going to begin work on my next book, which I've already decided is I'm going to take all of the scriptures that I mentioned in the Sharing Jesus with the Colts, plus many others uh, because of topics like this that we just discussed. And I'm going to take all of the groups that are in my book that uh, have different translations of the scriptures and also go into their websites and I'm going to show you how they twist the scripture and um, how uh, what their church teaches about that specific passage of scripture. It's going to be huge in terms of helping people to be equipped and when you discuss a certain passage of scripture with somebody in these groups to be able to go back or even prepare in advance as a reference to be able to know exactly where their group is coming from and what to expect. And the one thing I didn't mention uh, in relation to that is the passages I read from Colossians and Hebrews in relation to the Sabbath, those passages are changed in the clear word Bible, which is the Seventh-day Adventist Bible, so that they can continue misleading people in their teachings about the Sabbath. That's just one example of what I'm talking about. And so that's the $1, $5, $10, and then the $25 uh, 
I, I would put your input and your feedback uh, kind of first in line if your recommendations for future videos or content that you would really like to see covered, I would put that absolutely at the front of the line. And of course, I'll be sending out my, my thanks and I'll be giving you shout outs. So check out my Patreon. Uh, you should find a link in the end screens as well as, you know, uh, there might be a link on my channel itself now. And so check that out if you're led of the Lord uh, just to give a little bit of help. Every time you do, it's going to help me to be able to focus more and more little by little on this content and uh, that I'm putting out there for you guys. So until next time, may God's grace be with you.